That's a pretty clear picture. You in bed 35 degrees, mate. I've listened to you guys on your recommendations. Now, I've done a few videos a couple of weeks ago. One on the pale flush and another on a blockage. And a few of you commented, I should be looking at getting a thermal imaging camera. So, I had a company called Top Don. Got in touch with me and said, don't want to have a go on one of theirs. Now, the closer I ever got to using a thermal imaging camera is the flare that you plug into your phone. And I really didn't get along with it, and this was years ago. So, we had a couple of jobs lined up where we've tried it out and we tried it out in some other situations and we're going to show you what we thought of it where it can be used and just generally seeing if thermal imaging camera can help out your day so i just want to say thank you very much again for all your support i really appreciate it if you haven't subscribed make sure you hit that button any questions drop them in the comments I'll do my best to answer them yeah let's take a look at this week's video so it's a top down tc 004 it's the first time we'll be using this so let's take a look what we get so, a carrying pouch, charger with the cable, got a SD card, mini SD card, instructions and camera itself. Now first of all, it's, it is lightweight, very lightweight, nice grip on there. Yeah, let's set it up and uh, see what we can do. So in the top there, that's where your SD card and that's where you charge it from. And it's just on the top there. SD card just goes in there. I think that's really convenient. They actually supply you one because many times you buy something like this and you have to buy the SD card separately, but no, you get it with this one. That's a good feature. So that's it all loaded up. Hmm, I like that. It's a nice clear picture. Right, let's put it on a radiator, see where we go. This radiator was off. I've just turned it on. Look at that. You can see it all heating up there. And it's just showing you there where the radiator is heating up. You can see we've got heat all the way across the bottom. Starting to get there. I'll come back in a minute and just take another look. So a good feature with this is the button at the back there. If you press if you press it. I'll take a photo, I'll save that. If you long press it, actually start recording. So what we can actually do is record the radiators before the flush and after, so you can show the customer the difference it's made or you've got a log of what you've did. And you can see this one's been on there for about five minutes. You can see the heat starting to rise, starting to get across. A bit of a cold spot at the bottom there. Yeah, we'll take a look at that after we've done the flush. It's a nice clear picture on that. If we take a look at that's the radiator next to me here. Point at the floor. Can actually see where the pipe runs go. Yeah. So you can actually trace pipe work. So it'll pick up the heat off the pipe work. There you go. No feature on this as well is the light. So we're pressing on that. Get a little light on it. So if you want the floorboards or just need a bit more light, yeah. Press that and you press and hold again and it will go off. So it looks like we've got two cold spots on this red. We've got one there and one there. Is there any more? I'll move the camera down there. Uh, but yeah. So it looks like we've got a couple of cold spots at the front of this radiator. So let's get the uh, agitator. Agitate it. See if we can get that working a bit better. There you go. So we just use the agitator to identify them two cold spots. There we go. We've used the thermal engine camera to identify two cold spots on that rad. Use the uh, agitator. You can see there, that's cleared that. And it's heating up a lot better now. So, yeah, it's very, very handy to find cold spots in rads. So another handy feature I've just noticed on this, you can actually set it up on a tripod so you can imagine if you're working on a radiator there, let's just say, and it had a cold spot in the middle. What you can do is set it up, put it to record, do the work, try and get the blockage out, and it'll keep on the same angle. So you've got the recording so you can show the customer or the client, say, look, this is what we've got before, this is what it looks like now. Yeah, just took the pump out ready for the flush and look at that. Wow. I'd say 
we have got our work cut out for ourselves today. So yeah, pump out the way, new valves, got it all connected now. Um, got in the bathroom with some towels underneath just in case it all flows. All flow pipe went downstairs. That's full of water. Let's turn it on and see what we're dealing with. So just quickly run through how you connect with a power flush machine. So take your pump out, think your power flush machine as the pump. So connect your pump up to here, your power flush machine. And there's some adapters that we've got with the hoses. You need to isolate your cold feed and your open vent there. We're very lucky because in there, I'll just cut that pipe, I can put a compression coupler in there. To cap off the vent, um, isolate the cold feed, and that's it. That's the power flush machine connected, it's easy as that. So this is the one that radiates, because it's has got a bit of a cold spot in it. So I'm going to use thermal imaging camera just to see what we've got. You can see, yeah, look the arch on that. We've got a very big cold spot in the bottom of there. You can see the heat. It's going through the radiator, but just not the bottom. So it's coming in that side, being round the top, and missing out a big spot there. Yeah, that's going to need a lot of agitation. And if we're coming to this bedroom, you can see on this side the flow coming in, going up the radiator, across the top, and back down. We can see again, we've got that cold spot right at the bottom. Yeah, this is before adding any cleaner, just getting its temperature, just to check it out. So that's what the radiators look like, just heated up with the power flush machine. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to add the cleaner. Just let them run the cleaner run for one hour. Go back to the road, see, what the, see if it's done anything. Basically, we're just cleaning it. Um, check some videos with the thermal imaging camera, see if it's loosened any deposits from the cold spots. Then we'll try agitating it and show you the difference it can make. With the camera, we can actually identify cold spots and concentrate on those areas, making it a lot more efficient way of cleaning a heating system. Probably one of the worst parts of any flush is getting to the tank to clean it out. Look where this one is. Right at the back of there. Need to say I'm not filming taking that out. I'm hanging on for dear life, but yeah, I've got to get behind the back of that tank to get to the head of the tank. All right, so we got it out. I mean, look at the state of that. Wow. There's some muck in there to clean out. Always take the head tank out because this is what you find. Lows and lows of muck, right? Get the arse bottom out and get that cleaned out. There you go. That is the tank all clean, all done. Just got to go back over there somewhere. But that is one of the most important parts of an open venting system. It's cleaning this tank out. Um, so if we had not imagine all that sludge. Cleaned all the system, then all that sludge going back in the system. No, good. But yeah, let's... Uh, Get back over there and get it in. <sighs> yeah, that was fun. But the tank's back in there. Just gotta put the lid back on. Yeah. He's just like, I'm um, he balancing on beams. God knows what joys of being a plumber, eh? So the cleaner's been in a good area now. You can see it's better. It is better, but we've still got that big cold spot in the middle there. On that road, you can see the heat where it's transferring at the top. So, yeah, then we're gonna have to concentrate a bit on that uh, cold spot there. Let's have a look at some of the others. The downstairs are gonna be the worst ones. In the kitchen. Turn sideways. Don't look too bad, let's get a bit closer. See what we got. Mm. A few cold spots at the bottom, but you can see it's not as bad as that hallway one. But it is white hot there. And yeah, we'll give that some attention. And last but not least, this little one here. Let's have a look at that. Mm. A little cold spot there, haven't we? Maybe a bit long. Yeah, look at that cold spot. Again, we'll concentrate on that. So what we do now, when I do the agitation, I know look, the marks on the radio, so we'll be around with the thermal engine camera again and concentrate on the spots that we've just seen. So hopefully the agitation, the cleaner, the loose and deposits in the radio should be roasting off. Let's give it a try. So agitator's ready. You can see the cold spot there. So what I'm gonna do is agitate that right and see what it does to that cold spot. Let's give it a try. Alright, I'll turn the volume down so we'll be Noisy, once I've got that hammer. 
Okay, alright, here we go. Yeah, I don't want to go all the way across the bottom, but I just want to see what it does. For that. Mm. Is it any better? Not yet. Right, let me do a full agitation on that. And uh, from left to right. Then see it and then have a look again. Full agitation then. Right, let's have a look. Yeah, that's getting better or not. So you can see it coming in really hot. Yeah, it's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. Yeah, it's getting better. It's coming out not very well at all. Mm. See if we can get some better results. We'll, we'll keep agitating it anyway. Well, it does look like it's got small enough. We'll keep our state in here, let it run. Here we go. Right, does that look better? Oh, it's looking better now, eh? Yeah, still got a cold spot there, but... Mm. I reckon that's getting there. A few more stations than that, let it run a bit. We'll get that rid of. That's been about two more stations. It's starting to get there. It is starting to get there. Just trying to keep it in the same position for you. Yeah, you can still see there's a cold spot there, but it's a lot better. A lot better. Look at the top. Yeah, still got that cold spot at the bottom. So that still needs to go, but if I actually touch the radiator, I can just about tell, I'll think to myself, yeah, there's a little cold spot there. Oh, wow, but yeah, it's getting hot. It's getting red hot now. So once it's been rain, agitate all the radiators, it's time to dump out the dirty water. So what you want to do, connect up the cold mains to the machine, put it onto dump, and you want to balance the clean water coming in with the dirty water going out and we're also going to reverse the flow as well until we get nice clean water coming out and it took a while on this one to be honest so far i'm about enabling to clean in the first radiator i just cannot wait clean this while i'm doing this i've got all the radiators off bottom one i just don't this one it just goes clear then black again get that clear reverse it black again well brown black it goes again i just cannot clear I should call it <laughs> This is one radio. I've got any more? Seven more. Here's what it is. Gotta be clean. So you just think I've agitated that. Let's uh, go upstairs and see what that does for the water. Now I might have to mute the same. Small power for the machine. Easy and easy. Took a while, but. That one in the um, dining room is clean now. It's actually got clean water coming out, so this is what we're going to do then. We're going to shut this one off, um, then open the next one. So I've got them all off apart from one, open the next one. Exactly the same thing, just keep cleaning it, agitating it until it runs clear both directions. Yeah, it's, um, it's, I'm not going to film each one because it'll get boring. Nothing we've got to do on this one is fit a filter. Let's try it and get it on. Let me turn there, take that drain off out and try and get it on here. It's going to be very tight though. I'm hoping I've got some movement up and down. Um, we shall see, but I've got drain off there. And of course, on the wall start, there's a drain off underneath there. So yeah, I'm going to get that tea out. So we can get this little Worcester Mini filter in. We just about managed to get this in. I mean, just, there's no movement in that pipe. So what we've got to do is actually disconnect the pipe from underneath there. Just on that back connection, so we've got to tighten that back in, but yeah, just to have enough room um, to get the distance for your pipes, um, and which you need to cut out in the uh, in the book. I don't know where it's gone. There's a little card that comes and it actually tells you the distance to cut between them. I think I've uh, I've dropped it somewhere, but yeah, I've took, that, took that out, got that out, and cut it. And then we've got a filter. All right, everything's back to connected all done um last thing to do is an 80 pro check that's the color of the water which is pretty decent from what i had i'm just quite fond 
that radiation there. So yeah, just gonna do the 80 power check and see how we get on. Right, same position as earlier. This is the flush all done. If I put that that way. There you go, that's a lot better, isn't it? You know, that big coal's got no more. Yep. Yeah. I'm happy with that. Look at the heat going around the radiator. There you go, that's that boiler all power flushed, all clean. Just turn that back down, just put a stick on there so it's got a filter up there, sticks on so it's just so it's had all the chemicals, so that should be back on contract now with the customer's insurance provider. There you go, that is the top down thermal imaging camera. So as you can see, it, it did help me out on them jobs, especially the power flushes. I felt a lot more professional, to be honest with you, doing them jobs doing the before and after with the imaging camera, showing the customer where the coal spot was. And I think they felt they got a bit of value for money because they could see the before and after. And it helped me identify the coal spots as well, where I should be concentrating most of my work. So it did make me a lot more efficient on power flushing. And so you've seen a couple of videos there, but I've been tracing the pipe work as well. So it'll be a good one to trace pipe work. Uh, another good application it could do is underfloor heating, see where the runs are and stuff like that. So overall, it was impressed with a thermal imaging camera. I did enjoy using it. Like I said, it made me feel more professional. It did help me out on the jobs. Will I use it again in the future? Yeah, on the power flushes, 100% yes. Um, when the time comes that I need it, I can use it to trace pipe work. So it is a good tool to have in your arsenal. It really is. So yeah, I'm very impressed with it. Now, if you are looking at getting a thermal imaging camera, Check the link in the description. There's a discount code for the one that I've used. That's valid for a couple of days. I've put the I'll put the date on there from when it's valid from and until. So if you do want one then, click the link, use the discount code, and you'll get some money off. So thank you very much again for watching. I really, really appreciate it. See you on the next one.